We praise and thank you, O oh God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed Son of David and King of Kings by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. We ask that you bless these branches and those who bear them and grant they may ever hail him as our Lord and King, and follow him with perfect confidence. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
in the name of the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I want to uh, share a word of welcome with all those who are visiting in person with us this morning as we begin our Holy Week uh, journey on this Palm Sunday. Also, we have our special word of welcome for those who are visiting online. So on the count of three, one, two, three, good morning with palm branches too. Uh, we are keeping in our prayers this morning, one of our uh, Holy Trinity family has passed from this life, uh, Arlene Holm. Uh, so she will be mentioned in our prayers and we keep uh, her family and friends uh, as well in our prayers. At this time we will continue with the word. From Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord.
the eleventh chapter. Lord, Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them that what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David! Hosanna in the highest heaven! Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. All right, it is time for our Palm Sunday wrap. You ready to wrap? Hosanna, they cried. Leafy branches, they waved. They welcomed their, welcome their hero. Yea, now we'll be saved. How soon they will turn and no longer cry. Hosanna, you're blessed. But instead, crucify. There we go. Before I share my message this morning, I just want to take a moment for a moment of reflection and prayer with you. As many of you know, yesterday a dark cloud, and I'm not talking about the rain, a dark cloud came over our beloved city of Lancaster with threats of violence, threats of terrorism, causing fear, causing emotional harm, bigotry, the isms that come out in our society when fear takes hold, disrupting what was to be a lovely day in spite of the weather with those who have, had gathered in our city to, to have a fun weekend. Cliff, what is that called? Zen Thank you. Zen Khan. I never can pronounce it. But it disrupted everything, the businesses that were looking forward to the business that, business that they would have, the money that they would bring in because of the guests in our city, the tourists who were here for the beginning of Holy Week, and just business as usual on a Saturday with the market and folks going about town. That cloud came over our city, causing great disruption, fear, hatred, ugliness, terrible ugliness. And how ironic that this is the day that we remember Jesus coming into the city of Jerusalem, bringing humility, bringing the love of God, bringing the kingdom of God and a message of hope, of love, of peace, of, of acceptance. We as the body of Christ are called to be just that, humble, obedient, 
loving peacemakers. And I ask you now, with all of your heart, to turn in the red service book that is in front of you in the pew to page 87. It's in the front of the book, page 87. The second prayer from the top is a prayer attributed to Francis of Assisi, my favorite saint. Together, let us pray this prayer. Let us pray. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, is it in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Thank you. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we do indeed begin this holy week. Amen. From the time when I was a young child, I have participated in many Palm Sunday processions. Back in the day, as they say, we would gather outside in the, on the front lawn of my home congregation. The pastor would bless the palms, as Cliff just did this morning, and away we went. The palm parade was on, about 30 of us falling in line, led by the cross bearer, the choir, the assistants, the pastor, and then the congregation. Down the sidewalk we would march, lifting and waving our palms, shouting our hosannas, trying to sing all glory, laud, and honor, which was pretty funny. Trekking around the entire city block, and mind you, we were in Washington, D.C., sometimes being honked at by passing motorists. Well, after all, it was the 60s. They were probably wondering what it was that we were protesting. Then returning to the front entrance of the church, we made our way to the nave to continue the service with a few more shouts of Hosanna. Well, over the years as a parish pastor, the Palm Sunday, Sunday procession has taken on many different forms, depending upon the weather and depending upon the age of the congregants. But the most memorable one that I experienced took place in 2017 at Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church located in Flagstaff, Arizona, where I was serving my first interim position. On that particular Palm Sunday, our bishop, our Grand Canyon Synod Bishop, had been invited to come and preach at that service, but to also help us to dedicate the brand new fellowship hall that had just been completed. And it was really great to have Bishop Steve join me that day. And of course, we began the worship service with a palm blessing and a procession, this time around the parking lot. Unique to this procession was the participation of a real living and breathing donkey, which was owned by a family in the congregation. Wonderful, I thought. That's really good thinking. Is this what you usually do on Palm Sunday here at, at, uh, at uh, Shepherd of the Hills? Oh yes, we do this every year. I said, oh great, a more authentic representation. Well anyway, it soon became apparent to the bishop and to me that the order of those processing would look like this. The cross bearer, we didn't have a choir singing that day, 
the donkey being led by its handler, the bishop and me, followed by the congregants. All right, picture this in your mind's eye, if you will. Are you able to predict what might possibly go wrong with that scenario? <laughs> if not, let me share two words with you. Donkey donk. <laughs> yep, you guessed it. Bishop Steve and I were kept very busy watching our every step, stepping over, stepping around, fresh, steaming donkey dung as we traveled around that parking lot. And so distracted were we that we really weren't able to sing all glory, laud, and honor, but did a good bit of chuckling to ourselves as we moved. Well, that procession was one for the book that I may someday write entitled Proclamation, Pastoral Care, Prophecy, and Processional Poop. <laughs> Keeping it humble. Well, we are not privy to the donkey dung details regarding Jesus' procession down the Mount of Olives, through the Kidron Valley, and into the city of Jerusalem that day long ago. And this, in fact, is the first time that the gospel writer of Mark takes us to Jerusalem. And as we read Mark's account, it becomes clear that Jesus has planned out his itinerary quite well with his disciples, telling them exactly where to go, what to do, and what to say, regarding the beasts of burden that he would ride upon into the city. It wasn't a stallion, which was the beast that was usually ridden by more warlike, militaristic leaders accompanied in procession by armed soldiers and chariots. And Mark's gospel clearly uses symbolism from the prophet Zechariah, where Zechariah says that a king would be coming to Jerusalem, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now that would be a low rider. Humility on display. And the crowds, they'd be coming into Jerusalem from all over Galilee to celebrate Passover. And for a major festival like Passover, upwards of 200,000 pilgrims could come into the holy city. We hear that there were people in front of Jesus in the procession. There were people following Jesus in the procession. So it must have been a pretty long procession with folks spreading their cloaks and their leafy branches on the road in order to smooth the road as a matter of showing homage to a king. And those branches, those leafy branches, uh, were probably olive branches, or they could have been uh, palm branches brought from Jericho because palm branches were not found in Jerusalem. And they shout, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Save us now, Jesus. Save us now. We have waited so long. Believing that their conquering hero has finally arrived to save them from Roman rule and oppression whereby the few, the powerful and the wealthy, rule over the many, the poor and the peasants, cheating them, exploiting them both politically and economically, and using religious language to justify their policies and practices. Oh, God has set society up this way. This is the way things are supposed to be. Beginning in 6 CE, Common Era, the temple became the center of local collaboration and loyalty to Rome. The temple authorities ruled at the top of this local system, headed by the high priests, including members of aristocratic families, and Mark's Gospel's terminology for these temple authorities includes, and these should sound familiar, the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes. 
The chief priest came from the high-ranking priestly families. The elders came from wealthy lay families. The scribes came from a literate class and worked for the chief priests and the elders as legal experts and record keepers and low-level administrators. Mark's gospel also refers to a council, a governing body in Jerusalem, composed largely or completely of the chief priests, elders, and scribes. So the temple is now the center of both local and imperial tax system. Local taxes and tithes were paid to the temple and the priesthood, and there was also an annual temple tax paid by Jewish men over a certain age, and records of debt were stored in the temple. At this busy time of Passover, sacrificial animal sellers and money changers would set up their stalls in the outer court of the temple. And the money changers' job was to exchange Greek and Roman coins from out of town pilgrims for acceptable temple coinage at an exchange rate that would give them a very nice profit and would soon lead to some tables being overturned. The high priest who was appointed by the Roman governor and the temple authorities had a difficult job to do. Their primary obligation to Rome was loyalty and collaboration, making sure that the annual tribute to Rome was paid and maintaining domestic peace and order because Rome didn't want any rebellions. Wow, keep Rome happy but don't anger our Jewish subjects. Good luck with that. And some high priests seem to have been more successful than others in this endeavor. While Jewish law mandated that the high priest was to serve for life, Rome replaced them quite frequently. Caiaphas was the high priest serving at the time when Jesus would enter Jerusalem even though his name is not mentioned in Mark's gospel. So the temple was still the dwelling place of God, the mediator of forgiveness through sacrifice, and the center of devotion and the destination of pilgrims. But as we can see, it was so much more. So this is the Jerusalem that Jesus rode into on that Palm Sunday, where Mark writes, rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them, but it shall not be so among those who follow Jesus. Because genuine discipleship and following Jesus means following him to Jerusalem with humility, with devotion, with a servant's heart, with obedience to God's will, with the message of love and peace and justice for all of God's children. Because genuine discipleship and following Jesus means following Jesus to death. Jesus' humble procession into Jerusalem that day was quite different from Pontius Pilate's entrance into the city, although we don't read about Pilate's entrance into the city here. Pilate, the governor of Judea, and his military entourage would have been coming into Jerusalem at about the same time, but would have entered from another direction and another gate. Why was Pilate there? Because it was common practice for the governor and the military escorts to come into Jerusalem during Passover to make sure that the large crowds of pilgrims didn't get out of hand and cause trouble. Jesus' humble procession was ushering in a new way of being, a new way of living, a new way of embodying the kingdom of God. Pilate's procession embodied the power, the glory, the corruption, the oppression, and the violence 
of the Roman Empire that ruled the world, the kingdom of Caesar. My sisters and brothers in Christ, the stage is now set. See you on Thursday evening, Maundy Thursday, 7 o'clock in Fondersmith, as the greatest story ever told, God's love story for God's people continues. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord.
We give thanks to you, precious Lord, for this glorious Palm Sunday and for springtime's rebirth. We thank you for bringing us together in this, your house, to praise and worship you. We especially thank you for any visitors you have brought into our midst today. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our oh God, as we enter this holy week, renew our minds and spirits. Let the story of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem inspire us to welcome him into our hearts anew. May the palms we wave symbolize our commitment to follow him more closely, to live lives of service and compassion, just as he taught us. Guide us through this week to the joy of Easter morning. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of peace, on this Palm Sunday, as we remember Jesus' peaceful entry, we pray for peace in our hearts, homes, and world. Inspire us to carry forward the message of, your, of justice and peace that Jesus brought to Jerusalem. Empower us to be instruments of your peace, advocating for the marginalized and working towards justice for all of your creation. Lord, in your mercy. We pray to you, for you understand us, and in love you have promised not to push away any who come to you. We pray for people who do feel pushed away from a living faith in Jesus by pressure from friends and families or by those who do not share the same ideas or ways or lifestyles. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for your church that all those who trust in Jesus will be made able by your spirit to follow his humility, to see and imitate his modest life, to welcome and not to condemn. Help your church to be like Jesus, for you know the warm glow of being praised and the loneliness of being hated. Lord, in your mercy. We pray to you, Lord, for those who are grieving the passing of a loved one, especially through unexpected loss, that their hearts be open to the comfort of your spirit. And Lord, we pray for healing for all who are suffering from illness, especially those on our Holy Trinity prayer list. We ask now that you hear the petitions of our hearts as we raise our personal prayer concerns to you in this time of silence. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
You have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, you have accompanied us on our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You can stay standing and I will try to be quick. <laughs> yeah, don't laugh. I will try to be quick. Okay, Sunday Forum uh, today, uh, Nancy DeShields, Moulton, uh, genealogist, history of slavery and forced labor. Uh, Lay Academy class tomorrow evening is not tomorrow evening and is this afternoon uh, following, I think, the forum time. I believe all those who have been participating have been informed, but just in case. Please take note of the Holy Week and Easter worship that comes up during the next seven days and the office, church office being closed. And what else did I want? A uh, vestry report to the congregation will take place on April 28th during the forum time. It is a mandated once a year report. And then also note that uh, today uh, at noon, a journey through Holy Week. Uh, I think this is for people of all ages, hopefully, and it'll be preceded by a lunch in the cafe, so uh, join us if you will. Are there any other words for the good of the order? I like that. Then the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace. Share the good news.